Hi everyone, I want to send a quick video about how to share Desmos graphs using links for remote learning. So you'll want to start by going to Desmos, um, and I like to use the graphing calculator. It's really important to sign in to be able to save and share your work. So if you don't have an account already, you'll want to create one. And they make it really easy for you to do that. So when you go to Desmos, it will say log in or sign up. So if you don't have an account, go ahead and hit sign up and it will take you through the steps of what you're supposed to do. So I already have an account, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say sign in. Now, what happens when you're in here, if we go over, we can open up on the left menu and you can see I have a bunch of saved graphs. As I continue underneath the saved graphs, you'll see there's something called examples. So those examples are things that other people have saved and shared, so that will save you time. If you don't have something already to use, you can open up the examples and you can use those. Now look at this, this is really nice. It has a line and slope intercept form and you can manipulate the slope by clicking on the slider. And same thing, you can change the intercept by clicking on the slider. So this is a nice way to have students start interacting and seeing, well, what happens when I change the value of B? What happens when I change the value of the slope? You can ask them questions like, um, what ha when is the slope zero? If you decide that you want to make your own, which is great, so you just go up to the top and say new blank, um, then you can put in whatever you want to. So let's say we wanted to instead do a parabola. So y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Here, do you notice as I put in A and H and K, it says, would you like to add sliders? And I say yes. So now I have this manipulation that I can do and I can start moving around. So that's the real secret. The real key is just putting in variables and then it will recognize that they're variables and you'll have sliders for all of that. When you are ready to share it, it's probably best to save it immediately and give it a name. So let's say I call this parabola with sliders. That's good for you. That way when you come back, you know what it is. It will let you share it without saving it, but it's gonna be like untitled. And then later when you go to look for it and it might be hard to find it if you start saving a lot of things. So I really do like to give a name that's meaningful. And then to share, go up by your name, say share the graph, and it's going to come up with the URL for you to copy and share. Um, what's also nice is sometimes I give my students assignments where they need to share the link with me. So they do the same thing. They go in and they create graphs that um, I want them to do. I give them all the directions for it, and then they, they can share the URL with me to turn in their work, which so it saves them time, it saves me time. And by sharing the link, I can see everything they entered to produce the graph. Also, when you hit share, it gives you some other choices like export. So you could just get the image if you want and you can change the size of it and the line thickness and stuff you can download. Um, you can also get the information to embed. So if you wanted to put something maybe in Canvas, then it gives you the HTML that you would put into Canvas to do it. That's, I'd say, a little bit more technical. So that might not be what you're ready to do right now. But I like that there are so many choices about what to do. And of course, there's the option to print. So lots of great stuff that you can do when you're in Desmos. When you're ready for a new graph, you just go over and say, do a new blank graph. What I really like is that capability to share with my students. And I'll show you some things that I think are really helpful because it could be a lot of work that you're trying to do in class. And you want to not waste the students' time by having them write too many things or have to type in. So here's here's one I've done about the number of McDonald's worldwide. So I try to pick things that I think students know and care about. And I like to use real data because, I don't know, it makes more sense, it's more valuable, then there's that awareness of, oh, we're talking about things that happen in the real world, and I love showing that connection with math in the real world. So. I took this data, I already put it in, I would have shared with them where I got the data so that they could see like these numbers would be probably numbers after 2000, so 2005, 2007, up to 2019, and then how many McDonald's there were, were worldwide, and that would tell them if this is in thousands or millions or whatever, or if this is raw data. So I do try to show them the real numbers, then I give them the information by sharing the link. 
then you could allow them to put together, oh, what would be the regression analysis? So let's say we were doing a line, then they can come up with the A and the B, they can also see the correlation, and everything's done really quickly. Let's say if I wanna make a function out of that, N of X equals AX plus B, then they could say, oh, let's try to figure out what's going to happen after the next year occurs, right? So in 2020 or 2021. So they could do some prediction about the growth that's going to occur. So really quick things, really valuable things that you can share, and it won't take you a lot of time. You get to do the work once and then share it over and over again, which I think is really great. Um, I hope that helps out. I hope that's valuable and makes your class better for this semester.